guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to lay down mixed media so that each media does not interact with the next, causing a degradation or an issue for the next layer, which may be a different product. I'm going to give you the way I lay down my stuff. Now, is this the end-all, die-all? You can't do it any other way. No. Is this one of the best ways of doing it? Yes, because I'm going to make you think. I'm going to begin this with just a plain piece of paper that we normally color on. This is my everyday cardstock. I print all my colored pictures off of this. And I want this paper to last until the very end, until I go from the bottom layer to the absolute top details. And then I want it to survive spraying or spray sealing. If I'm using a heavy load of mixed media, I have to think to myself, which ones am I going to put down first and which ones are going to react with other ones? Now, normally, I wouldn't put down an acrylic before I put down an oil pencil. I want to start with the stuff that soaks into the paper, but it does not affect the tooth of the paper. That's why I would be using so many mixed medias to get a certain look. I would begin, say, with a watercolor. Now, if you're going to do watercolor on coloring book paper, you have to understand that you're taking a risk. The paper is going to be water saturated. It's going to lift the tooth up. It's going to swell the paper. That causes the paper to sort of crinkle a little bit. Depending on what paper you use, it could be a problem or it might not be a problem at all. My regular everyday uh, Bristol Vellum, Nene Bristol Vellum paper, I know how saturated I can get it before my paper starts to go wonky on me. And it's not very much. You can do two different techniques. One is a wet on wet. And that's when you take the watercolor, you wet the paper down. You let the paper saturate, then you use your watercolor paint. And you can notice that, see how it's swelling into the paper? And you can do a wash over it. Now, that puts a nice undercoat on it. But this is regular paper, and you can already see with just a, that little bit that the paper has swollen around the area. This will flatten out a little bit as it dries, but it's still going to affect the paper. Another technique that you can use on to use watercolor would be a wet on dry. And that uses a lot less water, but this would go on more like a paint. So this area is dry over here. This is the same paint. And that's a wet on dry. Okay, my paper is not going to be buckled, or not as badly. This is very buckled. This is barely buckled, and it dries very quickly. This way is better for coloring books if you're going to use a watercolor. And that's where I would start. On top of the watercolor, you can add a lot of different products. And the next thing you could add is a watercolor pencil. Now, I'm using my Z-Zone watercolor pencil. You can color with a watercolor pencil. Okay, you can color in uh, coloring books. And there you have it laid down wet. Then you could take a small amount of water and activate it. For a true watercolor pencil, okay, one that was intended for watercolor that does not have the binder in it, it will give you the look of the wet on dry. And you don't get as much buckling. Now, when would I do that? Well, if I want to color the paper before I put the pencil on, it does give a very nice look. So these are two that you can use. You can use pencil over watercolor. And I do this a lot. And you can get a very ni nice look that's very similar. 
So those are two options. What's good about a watercolor pencil is you could put details on that you might have trouble doing with a paintbrush. So it's a very good option. So far, this is not really good for coloring books, but these are fine. Now, on top of the watercolor pencil, you may choose to use marker. And there are two different types of markers. One is the alcohol marker. And this is the one that's a little bit more artist-based. It blends very nicely. And here you have it going down. Okay? Very nice. You could put layers. You can blend the layers. And that's alcohol. Then you have water markers, which can be used with alcohol markers. They're thicker. problem with a water marker is it can damage tooth. Keep that in mind. So if you're going to use a water marker, I wouldn't use it in a large space. I might use it in like for very fine details in a small amount of space where you don't have to be scrubbing the paper. You can use marker on top of watercolor if you activated it first. Once you activate the watercolor, it's not supposed to completely reactivate. It can activate a little bit more, especially the paint, the wet on wet. You can make it flow again, but it's not as easy and you can use marker on top of it. And that's pretty safe without making your picture go completely wonky. And you can see there is a little bit of blue on my alcohol marker and that was, it just comes off and cleans itself. So that's another thing that I sometimes use. So I always start off with my watercolor. I go to my watercolor pencil. I just started using full blown watercolor. I always used watercolor pencil. And then you can use marker on top of that. You can use a wax pencil or you can use an oil pencil. Now, depending on the pencil, some of these are water soluble. Understand this, they are not watercolor. Now I'm gonna get out a brush funner and we'll see if we can activate this. This is a brush funner oil pencil. And if I take my brush, every pencil has a different degree of this. And if you could see, it does activate. Now the difference between this and say a watercolor pencil is that the binder, there is no binder in a watercolor pencil. It's pigment. The binder is what gives you the feel of the pencil. It's what holds the pencil together and makes it not a water pencil. Now in China, watercolors are revered higher it's a more desirable effect. Sometimes what you're going to see is some ads that you know are for oil pencils, and then it's going to tell you it's soluble. Well, most pencils have some sort of degree of solubility, but don't think that you can use a regular pencil as a watercolor pencil. You're going to get this mess. Where a watercolor pencil, you're going to get a smooth dissolve. Here, you're going to have what looks like a smearing. To stop this, you don't use water on top of, you can use watercolor that's been activated. So always activate first, let it dry, and then put your pencil on top. And don't expect to have to add more water on top of that. And it works out fine. There's no problem. So you can add now a wax pencil, okay? You've got watercolor, you've got marker, now you have wax pencil. Now say you want to mix an oil pencil with a wax pencil and you want to add that right into the bunch. So now I'm going to get out an oil pencil. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? You're going to use oil pencil when it possible first and then wax. Because if you add the wax first, Sometimes, but not all, all the time, sometimes, depending on the pencil, you can have this. 
See how the pencil completely skips over the wax? It tints it some, somewhat, but not like the other way around, okay? So you're going to do watercolor, marker, pencil, use your oil, then your wax over it. Think of it as like you can't draw over wax. It's, it's very difficult. So now you have your oil pencil or oil pencil on top of your watercolor, your marker, your oil pencil, and then your wax pencil. And everything is laying down and no function is being taken away from anything. Now, on top of that, what can you possibly put on top of the pencil? Well, that's where you can look to your acrylics. And you can then use your iridescent mediums or any medium actually this is magic fly paint love this paint a brush this goes on very smooth okay it can be placed over everything with no effect ill effect on anything so you can see now this has a dual color in it this is also it's brown gold, so depending on how you look at, you know, how the light hits it. Now, what will a gel pen do? Okay, so here I have gel pen. Gel pen can go over watercolor very nicely. So you can do whatever you want with your gel pens over your watercolor. Gel pens never last for me. That's what these, this one's sticking a little bit. Use Pasca over acrylic paint because they're basically the same. When you use Pasca over a wax or an oil, and we'll let that dry for a few minutes, you can then take your pencil and say you don't like that on your paper, you could basically scratch it off. Well, it's a little bit wet, it's gonna smear, but you're able to scratch it off. It's not gonna hold over the wax. Really, the only thing that's going to hold over the wax is acrylic. Acrylic paint, not acrylic pasta. Pasca. Now, you've got all these mediums built up, and, you know, we can even add in a little bit of glitter over everything. You can put that over everything, but not under. If you start putting it under, whatever's on top of it, is gonna be no good. You're gonna scrape off your glitter. Let's see what other mediums I have here. Okay, Sharpie, which is marker. Well, Sharpie is permanent marker. Everything goes on top of that. It goes on top of everything. What happens when you put marker on top of wax? So let's get down some wax. And then say you want to put marker down on top of that. <laughs> what you're going to do is actually blend your pencil because when you put marker down on top of pencil, it's the same thing as putting a blending pencil. Blending pencil is just marker without the pigment in it. It's the chemicals and you will get a blending. Unfortunately, it's not great. Sometimes you can get like a white haze over it a little bit. It looks much better if you don't have the marker over the wax because if you look at it here and then you use a, a blending pen, pen, this works nicely. It's the color that starts not looking so great so that works some of the time test it out beforehand this is dry now i can do this i'm going to take my pencil you can't do colored pencil over acrylic there's not it you bind up your tooth and then if you use too sharp a pencil i'll try to get it off see all this the Pasca scraped right off. I can just go right across it and the Pasca is 
off the uh, off the page. But if you use Posca on top of watercolor, it soaks into the paper and you don't get that problem. And it should just dry right into the paper and you can't you can't scrape it off. In fact, look what happens. You can see it right there, the zigzag that I drew. And right there is the dot. There's the dot. And there's the dot. Right in the middle. That's another thing you you have to remember. So the rules are, let's let's review them. Always use your watercolor first. Activate it. Whether it could be pencil or the paint. Remember to activate first. If you don't, you're going to have a smeary mess all over the place. Let it dry, and you've got basically a base coat. Over that, you can use marker. The next thing you're going to use is oil pencils for wax pencils, okay, and then acrylic, okay. With paints, it's different, so we're just looking at what's going to stick to the paper. On side notes, Posca works really well over uh, watercolor. It will not adhere to pencil, although we all use it. We all do it. But you have to be very careful not to scrape it off, okay? It will not s stick to wax pencils. Use with caution. Doesn't mean you can't but just use it with caution. Marker can be used over pencils. Expect a blending. Okay? Be careful of your markers. You don't want to ruin your color or your tip by getting the wax onto your marker. Remember this, you can use the clear colorless blending sticks on wax. It will break it down. And then, of course, acrylic goes on last. And then your stuff like your Wink of Stella. And then you can add your silver and gold pens on top of everything. They will stick. Just remember, all pencils do activate. Don't use water over pencil. And the very last thing you want to do is spray it down. Now, with all these products on the page, how on earth are you going to take a spray sealer and expect nothing to move? Well, you're going to do that by distancing. Your first coat, I would not do less than 12 inches away from my picture. I know they say 6 to 8, but that's really pushing your first layer. You want to spray it so that it is... 12 inches away and fast, right like that. Do not allow it to pool on the paper. If you do it a very thin layer as your first layer and you're, you know, far away, it will seal in for the most part all your product. Will it give it a glossy appearance? No, you might have to do two or three coats. And that's after your first one. Then you can go a little closer in your six to eight inch range. And that's how you don't screw it up. So I hope this helped and I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.